LeVar, how are you this morning? Hi, DP. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Trying to figure great. out why we underestimated the Denver Broncos. And I say we as a collective media. Why Why have we uh, underrated them? Well, I can't go with you on that one because I've been, I've been saying I actually picked them to win that game. And I've been saying that everyone wants to make, make – uh, you know, Peyton Manning, a guy who's over the hill, he can't do it anymore. His arm strength is in question. His health is in question. You know, those things may very well be true. But, you know, I, I grew up in an era where I watched Dan Marino, who was super, super old when he was playing, had the big crazy boot spikes that he wore because of his Achilles, and, but was still throwing the ball all over the place. You know, Joe Montana in Kansas City, you know, different guys that, that went to different places that were prolific quarterbacks. You know, Brett Favre, these guys are still, when, when you're a winner and when you can play football, you can play football. And, and Peyton Manning happens to be on a team that has a tremendous defense on the other side of the ball, and he knows how to use the weapons that he has on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, the reason why people would be underestimating them, uh, I, don't, I don't understand it. I don't get it. But I think now you got to take a good look at them and say, if Peyton Manning stays healthy, that they look to be the type of team that, that could really – you know, challenge, I mean, which they have been challenging anyway, but they could challenge for a Super Bowl again. Are the Bengals in the same class? Well, are, are the Broncos and Bengals in the same class as the Patriots? I, I think that the, the, the Cincinnati Bengals are transitioning from being that team that is talented uh, and, and should be stated in the same sentence and in the same breath as a Denver or a Green Bay uh but they haven't shown the maturity. They haven't shown that, that instinct to be able to win when the games have really mattered. And so I look at them now. That's a statement game. I, I heard you mention how it wasn't a, a pretty win for them yesterday. Mm -hmm. I don't know that there should ever be a pretty win between the Bengals and the, the Steelers, whoever wins the game. So the fact that they're showing the ability to win games that they haven't shown their ability to win in years past – uh, I don't know that I'm confident putting them in the same class as Denver, but I certainly believe that that when you think about you know where they are now and and Dalton's um, his continued maturation process, they're they're certainly a real and, and true contender at this point. Uh, the Colts did not disclose Andrew Luck's damaged ribs. Is mm -hmm. that is that standard? And, and as a defensive player. Do you, how much I mean, do you shouldn't care? The, shouldn't the question be the Colts won't release information on uh, Andrew Luck's damaged season so far? I mean, <laughs> is that standard? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that is standard. His ribs are damaged. His, his performance is that they need to do an MRI on his performance. <laughs> they need to do an MRI on. I mean, his ribs will probably be okay. But do you want to know if somebody's it. got an injury that you're playing against? Yeah, you want to know. But if you don't, you don't. I mean, if that information comes out, you know, somebody asked me the question last week about Ben Roethlisberger's knee. If you know he's coming into the game, his knee isn't 100%, do you go after his knee? And for for most part, if people are trying to be politically correct, they're going to say no. I answer truthfully. Like, I'm, uh, they, they said, well, how would you attack it? I said, I would try to break it off, bite it, and eat the meat off of it, you know, and, and, and leave the bone, you know, on the on the ground. Like, you know, guys are out there. You're in Serengeti. It's 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 a wild place to be, and and if you go out there, you got to understand. I said I, I gave the example, D. If you go out and and you see a, a lion, a, a group of lions hunting, and there's an impala over there that is limping, and then the rest of them are all bouncy and this this and that. Are those lions going to run past that wounded impala to go after the other ones? Oh, there's a big wildebeest over here. Let me go try to take him down. Oh, there's a big bull over there. Oh, that looks like good game. Let's go ahead and get that one. No, you're not going to go past that one that's limped up. You're going to go after that one. You're going to take it down. And you're going to eat. So if you're out there on the field, you're playing this game, and you're playing a, a grown, full-contact sport, then you got to understand, if, there, if your ribs are injured, I'm going to hit your ribs. If your finger, like like somebody asked me about JPP, I'm going to test your hand. Yes, I'm going to grab your hand. I'm going to hit your hand. Yes, yes, that's truth. And if people are telling you that that isn't, they're lying. Like, listen, you don't go for a guy's knees to go for a guy's knees. That's just the rules of the game. And, and I've never been a guy to try to hit people's knees. But what I would do is I'd make sure I put 255 pounds of raw 
<laughs> raw type of cat on his back and see if he can hold me while I'm taking him to the ground to see if his body is stable and if his quads are firing the way that they're supposed to be firing. Because if they're not, then you got to get him up out of there and we have to see who comes in after that. But if they are, then we're going to keep going. Like, have you go. ever purposely tried to hurt somebody? Never. I have never purposely tried to hurt somebody. So there has to be, you have to understand what, what the difference is between purposely trying to hurt somebody and, and, and having purpose in how you go about what you're doing. If I know that, that you're slow, you're slowed down by the, that type of injury, then I'm going to try my best to make you think about, do you want to be on this field with this type of injury? Which is much different than going out there and trying to turn a guy's ankle while you're in the pile or, you know, doing certain things to try to hurt guys on purpose. I personally have never been a guy who's tried to hurt somebody on purpose. However, I've always wanted to impact your life every single time <laughs> I hit you and I touch you, which is different. I want you to respect the fact that I'm hitting you and I'm playing this game the way that it's supposed to be played versus I'm hitting you and I'm trying to hurt you and, and doing things that would say he's trying to hurt you as opposed to he's trying to hit you too. Two different things, in my opinion. He's LeVar Arrington, NFL Network analyst, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. Drew Brees and Eli Manning combined for 13 touchdown passes, 101 mm -hmm. points with the two teams. Do you remember a time when you felt helpless when you were playing against an offense or a quarterback where you were just – you were like that. I mean, you're getting embarrassed. Yeah, I mean, I've never – I'll say one time in particular I felt helpless and we ended up losing. But it wasn't a blowout. It was it, – I, I can recall in 99 we were playing against Michigan. We were playing them at home, and we were whipping the, the hell out of them. Just – just destroying them and we ended up having like a 10 point lead with like eight minutes nine minutes on the clock uh before you know before the game was over and tom brady went went unconscious on us i don't know what happened i don't know what clicked in i don't i don't know how it was able to happen the way that it did but you're out there on the field and you're watching the dude do what he's doing to you and there was nothing there was nothing you could do. You know, I had got to him, we had got to him during the course of the game. We were hitting him, we were stopping the run, and then all of a sudden this dude just starts throwing the ball all over the place. You're looking at the ball in the air and then it's coming down and a guy is catching it and then next thing you know, you're looking at the ball in the air again and it's coming <laughs> down and somebody's catching it. And it's just a it is a it's a helpless it's a helpless feeling and, and it's a sick feeling. Like it's one of those things like you can't understand it. Now, looking at it from this point, you know, where he's at in his career, it makes a lot of sense because he's, he's done that to a lot of people. So, But never a blowout. Never a blowout. Like, never, a, like, wow, like 45 points, 49 points. I've never been a part of a performance where we just got just, just slaughtered that way, at least that I can remember, which I have a good selective memory, by the way. So <laughs> somebody may go out there and, and computer land and look up, has LeVar ever, ever been a part of that type of loss? Something may pop up, but I'm going to have a good excuse to you as to why I don't remember it and why I wasn't a part of that. Uh, before I let you go, the ending of the Miami Duke game, how did that happen? I don't know, man, but it was awesome. I'll tell you what, like football, the, the reason why football, the reason why television and, and radio will still have life even as things continue to transition into the digital world is because of sports like football. It is the best reality television show going. There is no scripts. You can't write that any better than how it ended. So these things keep people paying attention in real time. And, and you're, you, you want to see what I just happen to be watching it because one of my kids plays on the team um, that one, uh, I mentor for. He plays at Min uh, Miami. And just to be watching it, and it's like, oh, they're going to lose. Duke played a game, this and that. And it's like, all right, the ball gets kicked off. And it's like, these silly dudes, look, there, here it is. There, there's a lateral. Okay, there's another. Whoa, he threw the ball. Wait, they might be getting tired. Look, they're, they're kind of bunching up. Uh-oh, there's one good block. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. no. No, can't be. Yep. Oh, he's gone. Touchdown. Like, what? <laughs> okay, it's getting called back. There's a flag down. They're reviewing it. Somebody didn't clip. Something happened. There's no way a game ends like that. I think the coolest thing is that that actually ended the way that it did because generally speaking, there's something that's going to bring that back. There's going to be a, a penalty. There's something, you know, an illegal lateral or something like something was going to happen, and it didn't. And I think that that's 
I mean, it's great for the game when those things happen. You feel for the Duke kids, and, and you know that they played a well of a game. But you know that's why you got to play every play. You got to play every down because anytime you get out there, when the ball is snapped or the ball is live, anything can happen. And I think that play proved it. Always fun to catch up with you, LeVar. Thanks for Absolutely. joining us. Hey, I, I think I want to see you soon, too, by the way. Get a handshake, good, nice big hug. You know, you don't even know about that, do you? No. I, I, little, uh, little, sports, little sports jeopardy coming up. Oh, whoa. Ah, uh, yeah, buddy. Are you, you, are, are you going to be a oh, yeah. contestant? I'm going to be hanging with you, buddy. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Who, who's on there with you? Uh, I'm not going to disclose. If you don't know who's all on there, I'm not even going to disclose. Just know that your boy is going to be there hanging with you. My so make sure you give me some helpful hints so I can try are to you win good some at money for our charity. Are you good at trivia? Ask me a trivia question. Keep it football, man. Uh, oh, so just pro football or college football? Uh, give me one. Doesn't matter. Mm, well, see, but I don't want to go too obscure for you. Don't go too obscure. Make it make it doable. The number one draft pick in 2000. That's no good. It's too easy. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> That's too easy. Are you serious? You didn't answer. Courtney Brown. Okay. Penn State. Cleveland Brown. All right. All right. And number two? <laughs> Hold on. Let me think about this one. I'm going to have to dig deep for this one. You might have to look at the mirror. Guy. Actually. Actually, it was only the second time in the history of NFL that two guys from the same school went one and two in the draft. Irving Fryer and I'm blanking on the other name, but from Nebraska, went they went one and two. And LeVar Arrington of the Penn State Nittany Lions, teammate of Courtney Brown, would have been the second pick to go to the Washington Redskins. Was it uh, Dean Steinkuhler went to Houston, didn't he? Wasn't he an offensive lineman? Hmm. I don't know. After Irving that Fryer, right. Irving Fryer, then Dean Seinkuler, the the tackle I think went to uh, Houston. Is that what you're going with? That's my final answer. Who okay. who is Dean Seinkuler? Yeah, who is De- Dean Seinkuler? All right, well, then I look forward to seeing you this week on uh, Sports Jeopardy. Sounds good, my friend. Sounds good. Awesome. Thank you for having me on. All right, bro. Thank you, Lavar Arrington. There you go.